What is going on everyone? My name is Jason and this is the Lumix G7. A little over a year ago, I graduated from grad school and my sister being the awesome person that she is, got me this as a gift the Panasonic Lumix G7. Seeing my enthusiasm for being a content creator, my older sis wanted to help ensure that I had some future proofing with a camera that could shoot in 4K. After getting to know and using the camera, especially in the last couple months, I have to say the G7 is a beast. And considering that it's less than $600, it makes a very strong case for being the best 4K camera for the price. Now, quick heads up here, this review of the G7 is gonna focus on the camera's video shooting capability. So if you're looking for a comprehensive review that goes over its ability to shoot stills, this is not the review for you. That being said, let's jump right in. First and foremost, one of my favorite things about this camera is the design. It's funny because I don't think it particularly looks nice. There are a lot of cameras out there that are more compact, look sleeker, and are made with more premium materials. But the reason I love this camera is that it's designed like a DSLR. It has the standard ergonomic grip, making it really easy for someone like me who's used to operating DSLRs to quickly adjust to the camera's functionality. The knobs to control the aperture and shutter speed are easy to adjust and super easy to access, naturally right at your fingertips when holding the camera. The buttons both on the top and on the back of the camera are also well placed and tactile, and the button placement makes sense. None are oddly located, making the camera pretty easy to use. The camera is primarily made out of plastic, but in turn, the camera is considerably lighter than most full-size DSLRs. Now this is a huge selling point if you're looking for a vlogging camera that can shoot really high quality video that doesn't weigh a ton to carry around with one arm all day. Moreover, it has a line in for an external microphone and a standard hot shoe so you can mount the microphone to the top of the camera, which is a must have for me. Now one area I wasn't happy with the design is where they put the SD card slot. It's underneath the camera inside the battery compartment, which kind of sucks if you have the camera mounted to a tripod and you need to switch out the card there's a good chance you'll have to unmount the camera completely just to get the card out. It would have been way better if it was on the side. The G7 comes equipped with an electronic viewfinder, which displays the settings you've got the camera set to. A really nice feature, especially if you're shooting outside in direct sunlight and you want to make sure you have the camera set up correctly. Arguably, the greatest design feature for this camera is the display panel. It's a 3-inch, high-resolution OLED that can swivel and tilt completely around. Again, this feature is a must-have for vloggers as it's important to make sure you're properly in the frame and in focus, it can be incredibly frustrating when you filmed all day only to see that you're not. Plus, the display is a very responsive touchscreen. It's probably one of the best touchscreens I've used on a camera. There's no lag. It's very similar to the responsiveness that's on my phone, which again is super convenient as you can adjust the settings on the screen, saving you a lot of time from constantly getting up and going behind the camera to make minor adjustments. The G7 is rocking a 16 megapixel micro four thirds sensor, which is a smaller sensor than most cropped DSLRs and way smaller than full frame cameras, but don't let the size and the megapixel count fool you, the G7 sensor doesn't disappoint. Because it is a mirrorless camera, you can swap out the lens for any other micro four thirds lens, or you can get an adapter like the Metabone Speed Booster, something that I have to get by the way, which will allow you to mount lenses from other companies like Canon or Nikon Glass. Now the camera came with a 14 to 42 millimeter lens that's actually pretty fantastic for a kit lens. At 14 millimeters, it's wide enough to use as a great vlogging lens, and it comes with optical image stabilization built in, so really helpful when you're shooting on the move. The G7 also comes equipped with tools like focus peaking and zebra, allowing you to get a much better idea of what's in focus and if you're overexposed, professional level capabilities that are a surprise to be seen here. But the main reason why the G7 is so well known is for its video shooting prowess. The G7 can shoot 1080p video at both 30 and 60 frames per second and shoot in full 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second. Now the ability to shoot 4K is becoming more readily available to average consumers, but it's still relatively pricey. When you compare the G7 to some of its competitors, it almost leads you to believe that it's just too good to be true. The video quality must be subpar compared to the more expensive offerings. Well, here's some sample 4K footage. You guys tell me what you think.
For this video, I had to scale down that footage to 1080p, but the video quality the G7 is able to produce is really good. Despite it being a smaller sensor, it's still able to shoot extremely crispy video with just the kit lens. The amount of detail you're able to capture is stunning, and again, for this price, the quality that you're getting is incredible. Now, the G7 isn't perfect. One of the biggest challenges I've had using this camera is the autofocusing. Because it's a mirrorless camera, it doesn't have the capability of having the dual pixel autofocus system that's on my Canon 70D. There are a lot of different autofocus modes like face detection, tracking, and single point focus, but on the whole, the autofocus on the G7 is slow and still has challenges with hunting, especially when you're shooting in 4K, which is really tough if the content you're shooting has a lot of things coming in and out of the frame, as the camera can't keep up with everything that's going on or gets confused on what should be in focus. Now, if you have good lighting and you're shooting in 1080p, the autofocus is a lot better, but not on the same level as some of the other cameras out there. At the end of the day, the Panasonic G7 is an outstanding camera for shooting video, and I can't stress this enough, for the price, it's basically in a class of its own. It's not uncommon for this camera to go on sale for under $500 during the holidays, which is just stupid cheap for what you're getting. The Lumix G7 is indeed a value buyer's dream come true when it comes to affordable, quality 4K video shooting ability and a legitimate force to be reckoned with. But hey, this is JSL Review. It's not just a tech review, it's a platform for discussion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you guys think the G7 is a true competitor with the GH4 and 5 and the Sony a6300 and the a7R2, or will it forever be the younger brother to these 4K leading cameras. Let me know what you guys think. That being said, if you like this review, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and to turn on notifications so you can stay up to date with all my other reviews. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.